Hi, I'm Trisha. I've been a FIRST LEGO League coach for 10 years. Many of you have asked how our teams keep building awesome robots, like the ones in our videos. Now, one of our FLL graduates, Roxy, will explain the process. Our team developed an engineering design process that kept all of us fully engaged and having fun while still learning every aspect of the robot game. The first step is to build a prototype, a kind of fake robot which makes it easier for us to collaborate. We have a decision-making process to make sure that we all get to have our ideas heard by the whole team. The robot runs are assigned to small teams, so everyone programs and all of us drive the robot in small two-person teams in competition. Every kid gets a chance to do everything. Our team, Robot Revolution, just graduated to FTC and became the newest brainstormers. We'll show you how we did it in this series of videos. Each one will cover a few weeks of the overall schedule and will show you how to keep the team on pace to finish in time for competition. Hello, I'm Karina from FTC Team 8644, The Brainstormers. This video will teach you what your schedule should be during the first week of the season, when your team will build the field and familiarize themselves with the challenge. Start by watching the kickoff challenge video as a group. Have everyone pay attention to how the robot mission models work and how you win points. Divide the team into pairs and assign a mission model to each pair. Feel free to assign multiple smaller models to the same group. Open the build instructions for the models and have the kids construct. One person should build while the other finds parts for the next task. This part is usually fun and also gives the kids a chance to practice using the building system they'll use in their robot. Once they're done, check the finished models to make sure they operate correctly. Place them on the mat with Velcro. When kids finish, they can start reviewing the robot rules and mission rules with the coaches. These rules should be reread at each meeting. They should be able to explain the rules to each other. Have them write the point totals on post-it notes and place them next to the mission model. These will help them visualize the value of navigating to a model. Hi, I'm Karina from the Brainstormers, FTC Team 8644. This video will show FLL coaches how to have their kids experiment with different solutions to the challenge. Every meeting from weeks two to four should start by reading the robot game rules as a team. Each kid should read a mission while someone else demonstrates it. Let them change places so every kid has a chance to speak in public. As the weeks go on, have the kids explain the mission without the paper or all the coach and monitors to make sure it's accurate. Ask every kid to build a fake robot with Technic parts. This robot should have two to four wheels or a back gimbal and a basic box structure that prototype attachments can be built onto. Then they can start driving the fake robot around the field and choose a mission to try and solve. Ask the kids questions while they're interacting with mission models to spur them to come up with possible solutions. Encourage them to build attachments onto their fake robots and activate them using their hands, driving the robot up to the mission model and showing how their solution works. When a solution seems to work, have the kids show and explain it to as many people as possible and record the demo using a camera or phone. Take pictures of the attachment and then set it aside in a small box as a potential solution for that mission. The goal is to have some experience with each mission and several ways to solve the same mission in your box. At the end of the day or the beginning of your next meeting, have the kids show each other their solutions. Encourage them to build on each other's ideas. I'm Gabriel from the Brainstormers, FTC Team 8644. This video will show you how to manage your team week 5 of FLL, where they will weigh solutions and develop a master plan. This meeting is lengthy, so it might require a longer meeting or two meetings. First, have each of the kids fill out a weighing spreadsheet. Weighing is a way to have them estimate how valuable they think each mission is, keeping in mind things like how long it will take to run and how many points the mission is. When the kids are done, send them outside to play while the coach or other mentors tabulate the data from the weighing analysis into the master spreadsheet. After the break, project the result or hand a copy out to each of the kids for the discussion. Review any dependencies that the kids didn't remember to take into account and correct as so. So my first one was drop the shark off, then come back, and then what I did was I came around here, do that, then that. You can't do that because you didn't yeah. get the food yet. I knew that. And then 
put everything into one of three categories. Will do, would like to do, unlikely we will do. A new team should try about 20 to 30% of the field. An experienced team who meets more than once a week can try 30 to 50% of the field. And a super dedicated team with lots of experience and lots of time can stretch themselves to between 50 to 80% of the field. Find an overhead view of the field and give each kid a copy. Have them take the list of will do's and draw between two to five runs on the field showing the robot routing for these runs. These routes should include dependencies and how close missions are to one another. If you can, project the view of the field and have every kid present the runs they are suggesting. Discuss the common themes between the route ideas and set a series of runs for the team. This is when the team should start to finalize runs. While the kids take a break, have the coaches determine two to three person run teams for each of the runs that are defined. Balance personalities, availability, ages, and experience levels. These run teams will work together for the next five weeks to prototype and build attachments for the runs. Lead the students through a discussion of the qualities of the robot that can do the runs. Talk about things like how many motors and sensors it should have and where they should be located. This is now the list of engineering requirements that the kids will have to satisfy. Hi, I'm Toby from FTC Team 8644, The Brainstormers. In this video, you will learn about week 6 to 7 of FLL, where the kids will plan the program, build the my blocks, and design the robot. First, have the kids refer to their run diagrams from the previous video. Throughout this video, we will be using run 2 from Hydrodynamics as an example. You will lead the run teams through writing programs for each run in words on a board. Here is an example of how run 2 is broken down into simple actions. After all the runs are broken down, ask the kids to circle commonly used movements like drive straight, right turn 90 degrees, fall black line, etc. These commonly used movements are the subroutines called my blocks that should be written and used by each programming team. Assign kids to each my block. They will write and test them on the robot and then put them into the program library for the rest of the team to use for run programming. Here is a clip of our run two in competition. You can see it is quite close to our original plan. Select a small team of two to three students to build the robot. The robot and the program will evolve and has to satisfy the list of requirements the team developed. Consider if there are ways to make attachments easy to take on and off. While the main robot is being built, each run team can take the box of attachment ideas built up at the beginning of the season for the missions and decide which ideas they want to refine and use. Hi, I'm Cruz from FTC Team 8644, the Brainstormers. In this video, we will outline how to manage the team through weeks 8 through 11 of FLL, when they will be programming runs. You will also learn about the design freeze and master program. Your kids will spend the next few weeks programming the runs and building and tweaking the attachments. Rotate the kids on the run teams between programming, testing the program on the robot, and building attachments. This way keeps the members of a run team busy and actively problem solving. If a run team has a new programmer and an experienced programmer, you can have the experienced one direct the programmer. That rookie should be the one operating the computer. This is an effective way to teach programming quickly. To keep everyone engaged, you can block out the time for one run team to work with the robot. While that's happening, everyone else can work on other projects like the robot presentation, posters, and the research project. If you have the flexibility, you can work more days these three weeks and give a full meeting to each run team so they can make fast progress independently. As the competition approaches, whatever is close to completion is finished and everything else is abandoned in a design freeze. This work can be picked up again after the season to improve or in between competitions if you advanced. If possible, by the end of your meeting week 11, run each completed run and time it to see how close you are to the two and a half minute time limit. Make sure to add 
10 to 15 seconds between each run to accommodate the kids moving and changing the robot for your timing estimate. This will determine if all runs can be completed or inspire the kids to make changes to the programs to speed some up. If time allows, have kids build a master program to select between run programs to save time and base. A master program is a program that allows for easy access to every run on your robot without having to exit each one independently and re-enter a new program. Hi, I'm Aditi from the Brainstormers, FTC Team 8644. This video will walk you through weeks 12 to 13 of the FLL season, driving practice and competition. Driving in competition is exciting and should be experienced by all the students, but don't force them if they express fear. Ask them to train as an alternate and then ask them if they've changed their mind before and during competition to try to give them a chance. We prefer driving in teams of two to maximize the points the team can get and not waste time tagging in or out. There are five matches per competition, so every member of a team of ten can drive once. When your team practices, keep the kids engaged by assigning roles from the competition, such as referee, timekeeper, scorer, and field resetter to those who are not currently driving the robot. Print out scoring sheets provided online for the scorer to use. By having the kids score the match, they learn the rules and learn how to spot mistakes in the setup and in scoring. Have the driving team review the score sheet, sign as they would in competition, and politely protest scoring inaccuracies. Practice taking the robot after scoring and shaking the hands of the ref in a show of good sportsmanship. As the kids practice driving, talk about choreography. What do driver 1 and driver 2 do? Write down the responsibilities and use them with each team. A great team should be able to mix driver 1 and driver 2 from different driving teams and get similar results. There will be many places where tweaks to make the choreography better will be needed. Do them if they are quick. Consider alignment devices to help the robot always start in the same place. Build them out of Lego so they are legal for use in the game. Write a checklist for the team to refer to in competition. Attach it to the card. Things that might be on it include asking refs to check an often faulty mission module, putting an attachment on or taking it off before and after a run, or anything else that not doing will cause points or gain penalties. Driver 2 is responsible for checking it and saying items out loud during the match. Teach the kids that this is the way pilots and astronauts work. Invite parents or other interested visitors to come during driving practice and have the kids not driving at that moment practice explaining the robot game and the robot and solutions. It makes excellent practice for the robot judging. Before the competition, take photos of all sides of the robot to bring with you. Sometimes there are accidents where something breaks and having the photos will allow the kids to rebuild during competition and continue. Bring extra Legos into the competition in case you lose a piece in transport and need to replace it. Transport the robot in a box safely. If you can, purchase a wheeled cart to use during competition and practice with it. You can put paper on the cart and draw where the attachments go in order to help locate them when driving. Ask if the robot judging will have a table with sides. If not, and your robot needs the wall to align or wall follow, bring a piece of 2x4 for one child to hold in the right place while demonstrating it for the judges. Practice, practice, practice. We do over 200 driving practice runs. You can have great programming on the best built robot, but poorly executed driving that doesn't align the robot or have time to run all the programs loses points. If the kids see things aren't working in competition and want to tweak the program or fix the robot system, let them. This is a sign of competitive interest and problem solving that happens with every real engineering team trying to get their system to perform. We had a lot of fun doing FLL and we hope that your team has a similar experience, full of laughter and learning. If your team wishes to contact us further, email us at brainstormers8644 at gmail.com and we will set up a Zoom call with you to discuss and consult on any issues you may be facing. We will be conducting these Zoom calls for the next few years, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for listening and good luck for the upcoming season.